and Deputy Secretary Wolfowitz, I went downstairs just to say hello to some of the people on the joint staff who had used, used to work for me. And one of the generals called me in. He said, sir, you got to come in. you got to come in and talk to me a second. I said, well, you're too busy. He said, no, no. He says, we've made the decision we're going to war with Iraq. This was on or about the 20th of September. I said, we're going to war with Iraq. Why? He said, I don't know. <laughs> he said, I guess they don't know what else to do. So uh, I said, well, did they find some information collect connecting Saddam to al-Qaeda? He said, no, no. He says, there's nothing new that way. They just made the decision to go to war with Iraq. He said, I guess it's like we don't know what to do about terrorists, but we've got a good military and we can take down governments. And um, he said, I guess if the only tool you have is a hammer, every problem has to look like a nail. So I came back to see him a few weeks later. And by that time, we were bombing in Afghanistan. I said, are we still going to war with Iraq? And he said, oh, it's worse than that. He said, he reached over on his desk, he picked up a piece of paper, and he said, I just, he said, I just got this down from upstairs, meaning the Secretary of Defense office today. And he said, this is a memo that describes how we're going to take out seven countries in five years, starting with Iraq and then Syria, Lebanon, Libya, Somalia, Sudan, and finishing off Iran. You know... It's always good to embrace the truth. That's one of my favorite clips. Because anytime I get led astray and I'm starting to think that some of this isn't orchestrated, that some of this is just random, that our world is unfolding as human beings want it to, the vast majority, 99%, I often listen to that clip. That was a great clip. Um, General Wesley Clark, if you haven't heard it, you just need to replay it in your mind. And just anytime you're confused and you think that any of this is just ignorance or random or dumb luck or us in some sort of evolutionary path, it's not. <laughs> Everything in this world is planned. Everything from top to bottom, and it's all a 0.01% scheme. And I like to be reminded of it. And I always like to talk about the 99% versus the 1% because if you stay focused, got to stay focused. You can't let nonsense lead you astray and all these little division games that people get lost in. Stay focused because they got a plan. The only people who don't have a plan is us. <laughs> We're the only people who don't have a plan for what's about to happen. In life, I think either you make things happen or things happen to you. And for the, probably the last couple thousand years, I and mean, we used to make things happen, you guys, as a, as a human race. We used to, we had a groove. We had our groove and we populated the whole planet. The whole planet was trying to get us, the grizzly bears and everything was trying to eat us and murder us. We would lunch for everything. So when you saw some other humans, you were happy to see them, huddled together by the fire. You know, but we lost our groove a couple thousand years ago when when I guess that one percent realized that, you know what, it's not as much out here trying to murder us anymore. Maybe we should murder some humans and steal what they got. And it led us down. And people talk about how modern agriculture did that. I don't know. I don't know. But that's my favorite clip. You guys, I, I love to listen to the Wesley Clark say that over and over again. We have a plan to invade these nations. And so. If you don't like things like murder and rape and starvation and all this stuff that's so popular today that most of our families and friends are in total support of, then you got to you got to stop gap and start to question what's really going on and where we're at. So anyway, good morning, people. How y'all doing? We gonna talk today. Is getting trouble Friday? I'm a well. You know what? I'm not sure if I'm gonna get in trouble that much today. I, well, yeah, no, that's that's not true. Somebody not gonna like somebody always doesn't like you. In fact, I think I found out yesterday. I think Facebook didn't like me yesterday. But a lot of people told me Facebook, they uh they put a question up, you know, if you like this post or if this was something or whatever. Man, leave me alone. I'm not on anybody's side on this Facebook. I don't know what y'all up to. I don't join teams. I'm not on anybody's team. I'm not on anybody's side. If you look at my face, you look at my background, and you think, oh, you know. Gerard might be in our clique. I am not in your clique. I'm in the human clique. So you don't have to worry about censoring me. I just, I want to know everything else, right? Like, 
For me, I'm interested in alternative news because I got tons of fake news. <laughs> we have tons. I live in a country full of just lies. And so, you know, both sides just lying. And so anyway, hey, go I and say good morning, everybody. Good morning, everybody. How you guys doing this morning? Jennifer, good morning. Suzanne, Rebecca. Yeah, that video pisses me off, too. Brother Robert. Oh, Brother Ed is in the house. Ish, Rebecca, Lisa. All right. Vern, Billy, Sharon, we got a bunch of people this morning. We're gonna talk about some stuff. <laughs> I'm gonna get I'm gonna get a little bit of trouble. Let me see. Who, who am I gonna I, I think today, and I don't know where this is gonna go, because I never know where this stuff goes, you guys. I just watch stuff and I look at it and I try to see what are they not saying. Read between the lines. If you don't know my background, I used to be an analyst. I was an analyst and I worked for a lot of the Fortune 500 murder companies, murdering people all over the planet. And it was kind of my job to kind of pay attention and just like look and spot a lie in a boardroom, spot somebody not telling the truth, an engineer that's fudging data where they skip and pause in their speech. And so I just spent a lot of time just looking at stuff, remembering what I know of what's really going on, remembering what the whistleblowers have been saying. And if it doesn't make any sense, I start to question it and go down that rabbit hole. And that's what we all used to do. And this is what we got to go back to doing. Because I think that's the only way we pull our family and our friends back who are lost in La La Land. Um, um, and that's how we, you know, we try to get somewhere. Anyway, good morning, Patty. Hey, Ginger. Uh, hey, Sharon. You new? Well, welcome, Sharon. Everybody give Sharon some love. Sharon, it's good to meet you this morning. You know, we just come on here and we just kind of talk. We go through the news and whatever's going on. We like to talk about humanity. Sharon, this is not a political thing. I don't do politics at all. If anybody loves politics, they can go now. I don't, I don't do politics. What we do here, Sharon, we just talk about love. We talk about human beings, human rights, sustainability, taking back the sustainability movement from big oil is trying to take, big corporations are trying to take over what we've always been since the beginning of time. We've always been sustainable. We talk about old folks stuff, Sharon. We talk about you know, what are the wise things that our ancestors handed down to us? Because all of our grandparents, they pretty much all said the same thing. A lot of our parents said the same thing. But in the last generation, we got lost. And today, we're in total ignorant land. And so here, Sharon, nobody's any race, nobody's any religion, nobody's any party, nobody's left or right. I'm open to data from everybody experiences. If you still feel associated with those groups, I'm okay with that. I don't, you know, I don't have a problem with that. But I want to know what everybody thinks. I want to know what everybody's experiencing. Because it's my belief, Sharon, it's my belief that all sides of all arguments actually have intelligent people behind them. And they all got data points. They got real experiences that we as a group need to need to know and we all need to pay attention to. And so that's kind of what we do here. We uh, there's a little hippie tone to it. We got a lot of love and uh, hopefully nobody takes anything personal. Nothing's personal. I think everything is a lie from the one percent and they just handed down some talking points and people get lost in that. And, and, and even me, even me, I get lost in it. I get lost in some indoctrination and every now and then one of my friends will pull me back. So that's all we do. Uh, good morning, Buddha. Uh, okay, yeah, yeah, I hang out with Claudia. Claudia is a real cool person. Hey, Beth and Beth were there. We were all hanging out that weekend in, in Vermont. Speaking of Vermont, it's cold in Vermont, y'all. <laughs> oh, Lord, I was driving up there. I got there around 3 a.m. Oh, my goodness, it started snowing. I thought I was going to die, you know, but no bears got me. And they told me the truth, bears go into hibernation. In the winter. So anyway, I'm going to get into it. I just... We, uh, we, we like to talk. And so, no, we don't do politics here. We just do humanity. Like, I think we got to take back human evolution, social evolution, societal evolution, um, sustainability evolution. Like, all these things have been paused so big corporations can make a lot of money. And they're doing it hurting a lot of people. And so it's time for the adults to kind of step up and remind everybody that when you're murdering folks, it's not politics. When you're when people are getting raped in the countries we're destabilizing, it's not politics. When when our children, because they're all our children all over the world, we're all related, we're all cousins. When they're starving in Yemen and these other countries, it's not politics. So all that office vindictoria talk that people like to get into, well, it's politics and it's geopolitics. It's like, no, it's not politics. 
you know, when y'all stop murdering people and y'all let people be free and don't put kids in cages and stuff, then it's politics. Then I'm going to go away, Sharon, I'm going to talk about something. I'm going to go somewhere. I'm find a little hole in a wall in a mountain somewhere in a cabin and I'm done. Uh, but until then, the adults have to take back over these conversations. And, and we have to take them away from the political parties. We got to take them away from the leaders. Not that I have angst for them, but they've lost their way. They've been bought by corporations. They've been bought by their own greed and selling book deals and having protests and all of this nonsense. And adults have to kind of step back up, pull the country back in the right direction. And, uh, and then we can kind of get somewhere. So, but anyway, <sighs> we're going to get in trouble a little bit. So what's happening? Oh my goodness, all kind of stuff. It's always kind of, it's always kind of, one percent's always lying about something. So uh, uh, the first thing I saw this morning, I said, I couldn't believe this. I, I couldn't believe this, Lord. I got the mammoth behind me. And the reason I got the mammoth back there, so let me see. I think I'm gonna say, <sighs> in case you didn't know the mammoth is gone extinct, unless you're a little weird like me. I believe in X creatures, yo. I love, I love X species research and stuff. And I, and I hope in the bottom of my heart, there's a couple mammoths still walking around out there on the Russia tundra somewhere. And nobody wants to say anything because they know we're going to go murder them if we see them. And, you know, and I like to believe the Tasmanian tiger is still alive and they have sightings. I don't know if y'all knew this, but they still have sightings of time Tasmanian tigers a day. And I like to think that the communities there, the indigenous communities, they know that if we know that they're still alive, somebody somewhere, some. <laughs> Some humans gonna get a gun and go try to murder one of them. So they don't say nothing, they keep it quiet and they're breeding populations. So here's my concern this morning. Oh, well, I just, you know what, I'll let you, I'll let you watch the news and I'll let you make your own little uh, assessment and we can kind of talk about it. But uh, it's not good, y'all. This one is, I, I'm, I, you know, but you, I guess you get your good with your evil and you know, we got what we got. And so we're gonna have to go through this little tough time but a good thing is you got a lot of people speaking up about what's happening now. And it's not about the woolly mammoth, but it's about these paths of taking species down directions they shouldn't go. Check this out. The illegal trade in ivory has more than doubled, and the African elephant has paid dearly. Conservationists estimate around 5,000 a year are killed, and African elephants remain on the U.S.'s endangered species list. But restrictions on importing elephant trophies from legal hunts in Zimbabwe and Zambia have been lifted. The U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service say well-regulated hunting helps raise cash for conservation efforts. Hunting advocates have long campaigned for the rollback and say the benefits are huge. When you look at the dollars that hunting brings in, you're looking at funding for the conservation departments in those countries. Most of their funding, it does not come from the government coffers. It comes from hunting. Among the trophy hunters are likely to be some of America's wealthiest, including President Trump's sons. They've hunted in Zimbabwe in the past. Now they can bring home what they killed. The shift in U.S. policy comes just days after Interior Secretary Ryan Zink set up a council to look at the benefits of U.S. citizens traveling abroad to hunt. In a statement, the people for the ethical treatment of animals said, if President Trump allows baggage carousels to be filled with elephant feet and heads from corrupt Zimbabwe, he will have fashioned himself after its president, Robert Mugabe, who slaughters all in his path. Critics say allowing uh, ivory... I'm going to stop there, post the article. So, <sighs> all right, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it in a favor. And I'm kind of talking to Sharon this morning because I, I, I love being introduced to new people. So, Sharon, what we do here, we don't do the hats. You know, we take our hats off. Right. So I ask everybody, if you got your Trump hat on, take it off to make America great. Hat. Don't just take it off for a minute. Let's just let's just be honest and let's talk about some stuff here. So the shame is uh, we know how to send animals down that extinction path. And I try to listen to both sides of the argument. So, so if somebody has a good a good argument as to why this makes sense, I'd love to hear it. I, I can't figure out why. Hold on, let me show you. Let me go back to a picture here. I can't figure out why this is cool. Like I get Hillary wasn't an option. Wasn't an option for me either. I, <laughs> I guess I'm glad I don't have my mandatory vaccines, but we have to like really really focus on at what point do we say you know what this is stupid let's not do this let's this is going the wrong direction so i like to listen to both sides of the argument 
and I'm trying to listen. And the only portion I heard that was making sense in this in this release was that um, uh, uh, tusks are part of the local economy. I get that, and I understand that actually. I do understand that. I understand that we go in these countries and we destroy their local local economies. We tell them how to live. We bomb the hell out of them and we force them to live the way we want them to live. I, I get that. And I and people got to eat. Right. If I'm over in the country starving, I've been selling tusks for years, then I want to eat. I want to go back to that. I get that. However, we're not at a place. I don't think unless I'm wrong, we're not at a place where the elephant populations can take this. So this is one of these things where you got to look at the matrix and look at the code, right? Like, I, I get it if you're still 100% behind the president. I get that. But no, I don't get <laughs> I don't get that. Never mind. Take that back. <laughs> I, don't, I didn't get it when they did it with Obama and he was doing dumb stuff. And I don't get it with Trump. When a president does something dumb, you're supposed to say it's dumb. Y'all, this is dumb. Okay. I, I'm, but I'm trying to understand the other side of the argument. But the problem is you can't hunt a species to extinction. You can't do that like this does it do things go extinct? Yes, they do. And in the natural world, that sort of happens. But when enough species go extinct, you guys, we don't get to live here. I kind of got used to the earth, y'all. I got kind of got used to the oxygen smell good. Oxygen tastes good. Like I kind of got used to all of this stuff. And so we have to kind of pull ourselves back a little bit. So I get the whole Let's have some hunts and begin some conservation type stuff. But before you do that, don't you have to have a large population like deer all over Pennsylvania? Y'all, it's deer all over the road. People just running over deer. And for some reason, nobody's picking them up. You, If you're hungry and you like roadkill, come to Pennsylvania. We got deer everywhere, y'all. But they do conservation type programs where they do make a lot of money off of the hunting because they let the population explode. They let it boom and then they go hunt the deer. And I guess that makes sense in a way, you know, I'm, I'm, I try to look at it from everybody's views, guys. I don't hunt. I'm a vegetarian. I don't kill any animals that I know of. I'm sure I step most of microbiology and bacteria. Y'all say I'm killing tomatoes. I get that. But as much as possible, you know, tomatoes, it's a lot of tomatoes, a whole bunch of tomatoes on the planet, a whole bunch of cucumbers on the planet, a lot of deer in the area getting hit by cars. So I get the whole, you know, if there's a boom in the population, you can kind of cull them back in conservation and make money to preserve them and help them and feed them and give them sorts of care that they need. And I get that, but we're not there, right? Like, don't we have to have a boom in the elephant population first? And so this is what I'm saying, where you start to see holes and cracks in the matrix, that every president always worked for the 1%, the 0.01% every single one of them and this is one of these little hints right because most of my most of my friends you know who voted for trump you, they're not going to hunt elephants <laughs> it's just not going to happen they don't have that kind of money right that you're born into that type of money most of my friends who voted for hillary they're not doing that either most of my friends who voted for jill they wouldn't do it no matter what <laughs> we don't for the most part we don't kill things but i'm not even sure it's we anymore i'm not I'm not even on the we camp because somebody asked me something the other day. Well, you're just having a third party perspective. Said, no, actually, I'm not. I'm not even in a third party. I'm not in the Green Party. I voted Green, but I'm not there because I don't think I'm not convinced that that's the answer for anything anymore. I think we have to be in the human party. And that's the party I'm in right now is I'm just neutral. I'm not in anybody's party. I'm just looking at stuff. And I'm saying this is dumb. This is stupid. Y'all, this is dumb. We shouldn't be doing this. So somebody's going to have to come up with a way to protect the elephants. I don't know what it is. Somebody's going, you, you can't have this. You cannot have elephants walking around looking like this. You might as well. Oh, my goodness. You might as well put a big sign on their forehead. Money, money, money. We have to we have to. Figure out a way. How do you ruin an elephant tusk? I think didn't they used to I think they used to drug the elephants and they would cut off the tusks, you know, so we got to go back to the activist stuff. We're going to have to go back to figuring out how do you protect the elephants from from the point zero one percent. Now, of course, you're going to see all day 
that is going to say, oh, Trump did this, Trump did this. Again, I'm not, you know, this has nothing to do with Trump. It has to do with the 0.01%. The 0.01% on the, on, on the left and the right and all over the world in all political parties are all going to go down to Africa and they're all going to be hunting elephants. You only see pictures of certain people doing it, but you won't. That, you know what, that reminds me of something. You only see certain people doing it because they want to walk you into this narrative that it's, oh, it's just, you know, Trump's kids. Oh, it's going to be everybody, all the 0.01%'s kids. They're all going to be over there hunting. So if we can talk like this, like I think that we can get somewhere, but this, guys, is that hint. There were certain hints that came along with Obama that he actually wasn't for the people. He was for the 1%. And there were the hints with Clinton and with Bush. And this is one of these hints that I want y'all to process that this isn't for us. He put on a fake voice, y'all. He put on a twang and he kind of talked like he was from mid-America a little bit. Sound like my family because I have most of my family out in mid-America, well, a lot of them. And, and he pretended to be that because he's a businessman. This is what he does. And this is one of the little hooks it has nothing to do with anything that the 0.01% kind of stick in there because they want to hunt some elephants. So... All right. I'm, I'm off talking about elephants. And I, so I think, unfortunately, we're going to end up losing the elephant. I think it's going to go the way of the woolly mammoth if we don't figure out a way to protect the elephant. Just want to see, see what y'all are talking about. I'm off talking. I don't I love I love the elephant. Y'all, the elephant is a beautiful animal. I don't know why anybody would want to hunt it. And, and yeah, that's that's a plug. Of a, it's a plug of a point because, you know, me, <laughs> we all got our beat. Well, we got our moderate vegan friends. We got our extreme vegan friends. I got some extreme ones, boy. You know, they'll walk you down that path. You start looking at the pictures of the cows and cows looking like dogs running for through the fields. But all of this is related, right? And we're all, we're evolving. And even our, our diets are evolving, right? It's not just a social evolution, physical evolution, but also probably a dietary evolution if you really paying attention to what's happening around the world. And we do need to eat less meat. And somebody, I think, um, hold on, what, Karai said something I thought I, I saw I wanted to focus on. Uh, most deer hunters are, at le uh, most deer hunters at least eat their kill or give their neighbors to eat. Yeah, not just for sport. And so, and that is, and that is another part of the dietary evolution. And a lot of people, a lot of hunters are going back where people are hunting and they're going back to eating meat that comes from conservation efforts as opposed to meat that comes from, you know, factory farming. Right. And I think we got to give people space. We got to give them space to kind of, you know, meet us in the middle or, or just at least start coming in the right direction. And so um, it is certainly healthier to eat that meat. It at least goes into helping that animal population. You know, so my vegans, I know they're, they want to say... <laughs> <laughs> there was a whole bunch of stuff, but we, 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 we have to try, try to not be so extreme, try to process that we all were in some sort of indoctrinated cultural thing. Like we are victims of culture. You know, I grew up eating tons of meat. We ate something called spam. I don't know if anybody, ate, it wasn't even meat. I don't think spam, I think spam was like hoof, hair, doo-doo and fur. And they just shoveled it up. It was what was left over and they put it in the can. But that's what we, <laughs> but that was good. <laughs> you put a little spam and mustard on, on we toast the bread. And my brother and I, oh my goodness. Anyway, we won't go down that road. So, um, yeah, lifestyles of the rich and famous Olga. That's what it's all about. Um, you know, we have to kind of move forward. And this is a moving back. We want to leave the elephants alone. We want to protect the elephants. We want to start pushing this, this, this in the right direction, more sustainable. If you are going to hunt and you are going to eat something, eat the whole daggone thing, right? And take the hooves and make an ornament out of it. Make something, do something with it. Try to be, try to come in the sustainability direction. Don't be an ignorant 0.01% land on either side, the left or the right. Don't be an ignorant land. Start to kind of come in the middle and look at the elephant. Isn't the elephant pretty? The elephant has nothing to do with this nonsense, right? So let's keep going in that direction. All right, I'm going to keep moving. I tried to look through some of the comments and um, a lot of other stuff. Okay, we got something else is happening. We got something else. So Russia, Russia done did it. 
Russia, I, we, we can we can like spend permanent time on Russia. We could just sit here and just have Russia all day. Russia, I think, is a 1% news category because they want to blame them for everything nowadays. What did Russia do? Oh, Russia, Russia, they trolled the UN. This was the funniest thing I ever saw. Well, no, it wasn't the funniest thing, but it was pretty daggone funny. So the UN, uh, uh, you know, the, what, what, the, the, so the chemical attacks, right? Let's go there. Let's just go to the chemical attacks, right? So there were, there were various chemical attacks in Syria. And uh, every time they happened, you know, of course, before anybody did any discovery, any evidence came through, you know, G.I. Joe America, <laughs> you know, Assad did it. He attacked his people. He, he did it, done did it. Russia on it was two or three times that it happened. They came back and they produced evidence and said, y'all are lying. Assad had nothing to do with the chemical attacks. And of course, then the funny stuff started coming out where uh, 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 people started putting the little chemical weapon bombs made in the USA on them, right? Because, you know, there was a lot of speculation that we're behind it. Because we all we always tend to be behind both sides and play this game. So what happened is Russia trolled the UN. They, they vetoed the, uh, the, the, inve the chemical investigation team, right? And so because the last time they did it, it was a few weeks ago. And they said, oh, Assad's attacking people with chemical weapons. And they didn't even show up. The investigators didn't even go to the scene of the crime, you know, so they produced these reports and Russia fired back like, wait a minute, we control the area. You didn't even come to the area. How do you even have any information on what happened? And so Russia and I think it was another country, I think it was Bolivia. They vetoed them and said, no, nah, we're not going for your chemical attack lies. Put that stuff away. And so Bolivia, be careful. They might Bolivia might catch a case of ISIS. Y'all need to be white. If y'all with Russia, you might get some ISIS in your country, and then in America gonna come for you. And everybody else was behind it. So that's the silly part about it. Russia trolled them. And 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 in a debate went back and forth. What did the guy say? The the uh I guess one of the ambassadors or something from Russia said, Well, we don't believe in it because y'all are fake. I think he called them fake pol fake politicians or fake something. And I was I was laughing. It was pretty funny. If I can find a clip, I'll post it. But all right, so that, the funny part of that is over. Now for the serious part. Here is the problem with actually believing this BS. Here, here is let me show you the problem. This is the problem with believing this BS. Like it's not politics. And this is why this is not politics. Because when you but is this the right one? This is the right one. When you believe this nonsense and then these lies about these chemical attacks, they do them again. And they do them again. And they do them again. If your public is stupid enough to actually believe non-investigations are investigations, to believe that before an investigation is done, you're already sending cruise missiles and bombing, then you'll keep doing it, right? If, you, if, you, if your people, your citizens are that gullible, you will murder people. You will give them chemical attacks. You will do whatever. You will fund both sides of it. The only, the only way that a lot of violence that we do stops is if we actually call them on the lies. If we actually, if they see that we are actually stepping up and we're becoming smarter and we're questioning them, they'll either hide it a hell of a lot better or they'll stop doing it. So, and this is where accountability comes back onto us as a nation, as a country. And I know some people don't like it when I say we, but we are, we are still a country. We are still a, we're still a human civilization, right? You know, if we don't want this happening to our cousins, then we gotta stop it with the Assad did it BS. We gotta stop it with the Russia did it BS. Like it, it, I get that I laugh about it. And sometimes it's kind of funny. But it's really not funny because people are getting hurt. I laugh because it's ridiculous that anyone actually believes this nonsense. People are getting hurt and they're going to keep getting hurt because you keep believing it. You keep liking the post. You keep sharing the post. And so, all right, I'm going to stop with that. A little deep, a little serious, but this is not politics. Not politics, y'all. Nothing political in, in using chemical attacks on people. And they'll keep doing it because you keep believing it. So I'm glad that Russia trolled. Good job, Russia. Good job, Bolivia. And when Bolivia, when they say y'all got some uranium and oil and some coltan or zircon or whatever they want to invade you for, I'm going to say it's BS. I'm going to say y'all ain't got no minerals. I've been to Bolivia. I can't find Bolivia on the map. 
damn it, I probably can't even spell Bolivia. But I'm going to say, y'all don't have nothing that the U.S. need to come in and murder a bunch of people for. So, moving along. Oh, I'm sorry. I, 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 <laughs> I'm having a little fun. There was, oh, there's so, there's so, something else. Something else caught my mind. And I was looking at a bunch of news this morning. I even looked at a little European news. I spent time in the China news. I spent a little time in uh, Philippine news and I jumped over to Al Jazeera. And a lot of this stuff, you just have to click through it. And I know y'all busy and that's why I do this because y'all on the plantation, some of y'all in the real hot part of the plantation, y'all ain't got no time to look at the news. Damn it, got to fill your bag. So uh, I, I'm not, and I'm on a hot part of the plantation, but I have a little bit of shade. So I take that extra time I have and I'll kind of go through the news and see what they're trying to do. So something else I wanted to show you, uh, where is it at? It is over here. Okay. This is, um, uh, let me see. So I said something, I said something that was kind of, uh, uh, let me see. That was, that, yeah, that was kind of good though. That was good on the right with the whole Russia thing and attacking the Russian narrative. And it was a little damning with the whole hunting the tusk. And so we, I give it a little good, a little bad. Nothing's ever good or bad. There's nobody, nobody that's all good or all evil. I know they're going to start posting names and tagging people, but that I know of that, you know, I don't think there's any good or evil. There's always good and bad. And you want to focus on the good and bad. It was like something I was thinking about the other day. You know how we keep calling ourselves a civilization? We keep, we keep, I was going to go to something else, but my mind did something. Y'all leave me alone. Hold on. We call ourselves a civilization. And I was thinking about this the other day, right? We, we, what does it mean to be civilized, right? It means that you have a civil society. It means that your society is based in civil things. A civilized society can't be based on slavery. A civilized society can't be based on destroying other countries and causing mass starvations. A civil society at its core and base has to be civil. It can't be based on uncivil things. And our society is based on completely uncivil requirements because of currency and debt. And the, and the societies that we push on other countries, the destabilization we do with regimes in other countries. And so I'm at a point where I can't see, and I'd love to hear the other side of the debate, but I don't see that we are a civilized society. I don't think we're civil. I don't think we're civil. And I think we're really, really sick. I think we're really sick. And I think that we need to get back on the path to becoming civilized. I don't think we should be calling ourselves a civilized society. Now that we know, we never knew. Let's be fair. Some of y'all knew, but the majority of us never knew why everything in America was so cheap. We didn't really know there was a such thing as an economic hitman going around, you know, setting up the fall of governments if they didn't get a great price on minerals from Wall Street and sending in the U.S. military to get killed and kill a bunch of people so they can get good prices. We never knew that. That's not the act of a civilized society. That's not civil. So I think we need to get back on the path to becoming civilized. And that's Yemen. That's a little brother over there in Yemen. And so well, and I'll, I'll, I'm on that path, so I'll mention the update on Yemen right now. So Saudi Arabia, they decided to lower some of the blockade. Meanwhile, the UN and other people who are there on the ground, they have no idea where they lowered any parts of the blockade because all this stuff is still being blocked. It's been two weeks now. Nothing's being allowed in. And as y'all know, when it comes to water, the human being cannot go without water for more than three days, which is why I think the two weeks came in. This is gen this is this is sterilization of the population. This is this is mass murder. So now they're talking about possibly two million, two million kids are gonna die from this. You 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 can't go three days without water, and water is one of the biggest resources they can't seem to get. And so you have people who are dying right now. You have people who will be dying before this little broadcast is over. No, you have people dying afterwards. So once again, it's not political, you know, and it has nothing to do with Trump or Obama because they both did it and they're both going to do it. Why? Because blind support. People totally support them or they're totally against them. 
and it props up this uncivil society that we do not have. And the long-term effects of all of this, it's not just people who die, right? The two million to two million kids who now they're talking diphtheria and cholera, uh, and and then the adults who die. There are gonna be a lot of people who possibly don't die. And what do you think is gonna happen to those people? Those people, a lot of them will have medical issues for the rest of their lives, stunted growth, and the damage it does to their immune systems, their brains, their liver from lack of hydration, and so. In walks the pharmaceutical industry. So, of course, they vaccinate everybody, sell a bunch of drugs. But then there's also the epigenetic effects. And these people are now, you know, tweaking the warrior gene and, 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 and tapping into some of that psychopath, psychopath, psychopathy. That don't make no any sense. Psychopath tendencies because a lack of hydration and a lack of food was one of the things researched that activates warrior genes. And so you have not just the long term health effects that will have high costs. You have the long term hate effect also and the revenge effect because they're not stupid. The whole world knows where all of these weapons are coming from. The whole world knows why the U.N. is scared to say things against America. The whole world knows who's behind all of this. And unfortunately, they think it's Wall Street. And while they are the mastermind of that plan, it is us who support them. It is us who continue to vote for people and continue to back these ideas and these narratives that being an uncivil society is a good thing because it the people in slavery, I can't see or they don't look like me. You know, uh, uh, they're not my religion. They're not within my borders. And so now slavery is OK. Slavery was a bad thing a long time ago, but now slavery is a good thing. It's an OK thing, you know. So, all right, I I'm, I'm went down that path. That was that's a deep rabbit hole, but we are not a civilized society. And, and me personally, I'm, I'm done with pretending that we are. We are a very sick society. Let me show y'all something. This is what I wanted to show you. <sighs> okay. This is hard work, y'all. <laughs> mm. Even though with the 1% is not easy. These brothers are always up to something. <clears throat> so guess what? We won the war for Iraq. Again, again, <laughs> let me find a Teletubby. Who's that Teletubby? Again, 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 the kids, my kids had me watching Teletubbies. Oh my goodness. Again, again, we won the war for Iraq again, again. Why did we win the war for Iraq again, again? I speculate it's because if y'all look, y'all see U.S. troops driving them Humvees and all that stuff your tax money make. Y'all see, hold on, look, look, let's look, look at all of them. They look like Americans to y'all. Y'all see any America? Any Americans in any of them? No, ain't no Americans in them. So apparently, we push ISIL back, ISIS back, Al Qaeda, whatever y'all are calling the CIA Department of Terrorism, whatever y'all call them nowadays. Apparently, we beat them again. And so I like this picture. Look at all that equipment. All that equipment trying to get up out the country. Let me let me let me give. Let me, I got a theory. I have a theory. Let me tell you my theory. Y'all can tell me if I'm wrong. Hold on. I can't pause the picture in the right spot. Okay, right there. This is what I want to see. Y'all know what that is. That's a truck. Humvee. Some of my military brothers can correct me, but they got all the different things on the top. Gun turrets and shooting things and everything. You know what had, You know what trucks need? You ever drive a truck on an American road? If you ever drove a car on a Pennsylvania road, you know... After winter time, they don't fix the potholes. They wait about six months. Why? So everyone could bust their tires and, you know, because it, it, it sparks an industry, right? When you bust your tires on them and you bust. What I, a few years ago, I think I busted my suspension or something I was pissed off about cost me a couple thousand dollars. But anyway, uh, uh, you got somebody has to care for those trucks. Those trucks need parts. The trucks break down. And guess what? On American, on Pennsylvania roads, for the most part, ain't nobody shooting at you. Ain't no IEDs. Ain't, you ain't running over camels. And, you know, you don't, you're not running over other parts of other vehicles. Think about this. Think about this for a minute. So somebody, I'm not going to mention any names, some corporation sold a whole bunch of trucks and equipment and bombs and guns and tanks to the other side. Well, they gave them to the Iraqi side. We let, well, they sold them to the other side, gave them to the Iraqi side when we went there. And then we left there and they came back and they took them back from the Iraqis. And so we had to go back in the Iraqis. So we sent the Iraqis more because they took some of them. 
And then so they took those trucks that that to fight the trucks that we put there the other time before with the other guns and the other bombs and the other bullets. And so the trucks that we sent in the most recent time just beat back all the trucks we sent the other time. Do you know how many parts that is? Do you have any? Just think about that for a minute. Every time the truck gets shot, every time the truck has a breakdown, a problem, the suspension, the transmission, the, I don't think they use carburetors. They might use carburetors because when Bush sent them there, he didn't send them there with a whole lot. Every time these things break down, there's a corporation making a hell of a lot of money. And I never thought about that because we think about it's just the sell of the stuff, but it's not. Because every time it breaks down, they got to buy more. And every time somebody's shooting at it again, they got to buy some more. And so it's not just the sell of the arms, but then it's the upkeep and the parts. And like with American car companies, they don't make their money on the sale of the car anymore. They make their money on the service and the parts. And so I'm just sitting here thinking like, man, that's just another aspect I didn't even think about. So we done beat ISIS back again. And we're going to go beat them somewhere else. And guess who's paying for all of that? All of it. <laughs> all it, There are so many schemes upon schemes upon schemes of all of this. And it all fits together in this big, nasty business plan. And it's based on getting poor people in other countries to murder each other. But but it's also getting it's based on getting poor people in America to yell and scream and protest at each other and possibly murder each other. And it all fits together. And it's this big, scary thing. So don't cheer that 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 the Iraqi military beat back our other <laughs> trucks and vehicles and weapons from our other side, because they'll be back. They're not done. They'll go back. But I didn't think of the part side of it. It's so big and nasty, and so you could probably spend a lifetime, and you probably wouldn't dig down deep enough to find out all the companies that we work for, and that's where I was going with that, that, that we work for that are behind all of it. Because you don't have to be, and I know General Dynamics doesn't make Humvees, but I don't know who makes Humvees. I'm not going to throw a name out there. You don't have to be that company. You could be, you know, Xeon. You work for Xeon Rubber. And they make a little rubber part that goes on a little piece that fits on the part of the Humvee. And this is where all of this feeds in. And this is why from a sustainable perspective and a beat back this nonsense perspective, you have to look at where you work also. Do you have a sustainable job? Is it based on a local economy? Are they making a little too much money than what they should? Oh, I got a story to tell. I'm not going to tell that story. I work for somebody I was not supposed to work for. But I didn't know in college that they were tied in with things they shouldn't be tied in with. But I'm not touching that. Um, they got shut down. The government got them. So, but if you make a little too much money, you're not supposed to be making that much money. Then, then you know, these things feed together. And so you have to look at, you know, everyone has to make those choices. Because we talk about solutions, right? We can't just talk about the problems. You got to talk about the solution. Uh, so many of these industries all feed together. And this is why we are not civil. You can't have a society where corporations run the entire society and the bottom line is always the bottom line because it means that human beings will not be the significant factor in that equation. The human beings will be like the elephants. The human beings will be like the woolly mammoths and the tusks. Yeah, it makes sense that, that, you know, when, when to keep them while you got them, but when it makes more profit to get rid of them or to kill them or fund both sides of them, then you can murder them and it's okay. So I don't believe the BS. I, <sighs> man, this is rough work. What else is going on? All kind of crazy stuff else is going on. Uh, oh, Hong Kong poverty. That was another thing. I was looking and I have to post, I'll post that. So in Hong Kong, apparently they got a whole lot of poverty happening over there and there's big issues. And it's a crazy thing, but it mirrors America. And if you pay attention to, let me see if I got a clip of that. If you pay attention, yeah, I never would have guessed it, but it's the same conversations we're having here about when you have poor people and you don't look out for them, they turn to all types of crime and they have all kinds of problems. But this is why our societies don't work. This 
model of society does not work. The currency based society means somebody will be the master. Somebody will be on the porch. Somebody will be the slave out in the field and somebody's going to be in the hot box in the bottom. And we're all pawn. Yes. Thank you, Sister Lori. We're all pawns. And onions. Wasn't it that famous sayer, uh, that famous prophet named Shrek? He said onions have layers, you know, corrupt societies have layers and they get people lined up in different classes and different parts of it. And they get your job attached to the rub and how to, you know, and they line you up and in cushioning that 0.01% the slave, the master at the top, you know, now you might not be taking a whip and whipping people beneath you, but your very existence and every, every dollar you make in an unsustainable fashion feeds into all of this. And this is why I don't let people go down this whole, you know, oh, we're fighting for poverty. We're fighting for the, and I'm looking at you like, no, no, stop it, stop it. If you are still tied in with corporate America and all these systems and these massive corporations, you know, you're not, you're not helping. And you can still work for a small company. Um, you won't get the health care that you get. You won't make the money that you get. But you know, I figure if Robert E. Lee did it. He stepped away from slavery before he was required to. I think a lot of you could too. I think if you think about it, you maybe don't need the big house. I think maybe you don't need the faster car. I think maybe you don't need, maybe the next generation is a little more important in starting to starve out some of these screws of a society. Um, uh, Buddha said, how loon side of Hong Kong is an entire ghetto. See, I, and I don't know this, and this is, this is why it's awesome to know people who have been to all these different areas. I would never know. I had no idea that poverty was such a big issue in Hong Kong. But looking at the news report, it mimics America, you know, and it's not a racial thing and it's not a religion thing. And it's not if you got trapped on the wrong side of being screwed by somebody in an onion layer, class onion layer, just a little higher than you. And you end up in that spot and you don't have onion layer privilege. That might be a thing, y'all. Onion layer privilege. <laughs> you might you might suffer from the fact that you just you just a little too far down on the onion. So, all right. So what else we got going on? Uh, oh boy, Australia hit my radar. Australia hit the radar, y'all. Let me show you why Australia hit the radar. I don't mess with Australia much because Australia y'all really don't do too much, y'all. I'm scared to think that in some ways you still got some civilization happening over there, but y'all screwing up. Mimicking America, don't mimic America, y'all. Because anytime you mimic, mimic America, it's just we we used to be, the you know our parents' generation and maybe before that we used to be the people to mimic. We are not the people to mimic anymore. This is a trap. Go back. This is an evolutionary trap. We are not going the right way. Uh, oh, here it goes right here. Let me see if I can pull this up and show sure. y'all something real quick. Oh, Australia, Australia, you you guys. Y'all need to stop. Don't follow us. Don't hire our military to go get that. What y'all trying to get out of um, what's that African country? The African country they found. That was the Zircon country. All right, so here we go. Australia, this is what y'all, your 1% is up to today. And when I say Australia, I don't mean Australia. I mean the one, the 0.01% in Australia because they doing the same thing there that they're doing here that they do everywhere else. Y'all look at this. This is a... Uh, Kind of annoying. These are the shocking videos which sparked an inquiry into what was happening to children imprisoned in Australia. In one, a boy is strapped to a chair and hooded. Another video shows a boy being picked up by a guard and thrown into his room. Much of the abuse happened here at the Don Dale Prison for Young Offenders near Darwin. Well over 90% of people detained here and elsewhere in the Northern Territory over recent years have been Aboriginal. Earlier this year, boys living in the Territory told Al Jazeera that, among them, the abuse was well known. I knew they treated us different, you know, like... knew, like, they'd done that kind of stuff, you know, seen it with my own eyes as I grew up, you know. Yeah, all the boys that go in and out of there, they tell you what it's like, you know, and then it's not good. On Friday, after an investigation which has lasted more than a year, Members of a Royal Commission inquiry released their report and recommendations. 
They said they'd found shocking and systemic failures over many years, which were well known and ignored at the highest levels. The Northern Territory's chief minister said the failings were a stain on the Northern Territory's reputation. We have been breaking our kids, not building them up. That has become increasingly evident through the Royal Commission hearings. The report recommends the immediate closure of the Don Dale prison. It says children under 14 should only be detained for the most serious of crimes. Tear gas, force and restraint should never be used on children. And I'm going to stop there. It's tough to watch. But, you know, and I, and I see, and it's, it's, it's my heart dearly. But, you know, the thing about this, though, folks, is there is a silver lining in the fact that they are actually honest. They shut the prison down and they admit it to the fact that they should not be doing this to their children, uh, which is a, a path that we have not gotten to in America. We have not gotten to a place where we realize that these kids they are just kids. Let me go back. They're just kids, right? These are just kids there. And you know what? Now, kids do dumb things. You ever done something dumb as a child? You ever do something dumb? Dumb things aren't criminal. Dumb things are just dumb. Somebody sprays spray paint on a wall, that's just dumb. That's not criminal. You know what you do with the wise people used to do? You give them a tub of paint and you go paint the wall back over. The punishment fits the crime. You do something dumb walking down the street in the trip of old lady or something, something just dumb. Then you need to serve time at the old folks' home. Maybe you need to be putting in a garden in them for a year. You need to be growing some herbs and some tomatoes. The punishment's supposed to fit the crime, but you're supposed to teach people in the punishment. You're not just supposed to put them in a cage and make money from them. And this is what American slavery, the commissary slavery is about in prison, is well, one, they get them to, to just sit there and exist and spend your tax dollars and get, make them live in a cage smaller than what zoo animals get to live in because they have to be animals, right? They And and they spend that money. Somebody's making money on the Snicker bars and the Twickers and all the commissary that they're buying. They're making a lot of money from the tax dollars. So it makes a lot of jobs for COs and, and you know, the wardens and all of the stuff, the people who make the clothes. And it's just slavery. It's all, it's just slavery. And it's taking advantage of these young kids and it's not just America. The only difference though, and like I said, that, that I appreciate from what he just said in Australia is they made a mistake and they're admitting up to it. Now, mind you, the mistake should have never happened if, if we had civil modern society and we didn't put people in cages and human rights were allowed, it never would have happened, but at least they admitted up to it and they closed the prison. That doesn't happen in America, y'all not on any real scale. They make bigger prisons. They make nicer prisons. Why? Because I like my politician. And because my politician fits my narratives, then I'm gonna accept the evil and the uncivil things that they're gonna do or that they did, or I won't turn on them. You know. And this gets back to the last administration building more prisons than elementary schools, right? We know this, this is a fact. Unfortunately, people who are still cheering you know, because they still love that president, they refuse to chastise him. And so, of course, the next president's going to do it. Now, they'll chastise the next president who does it because the next president doesn't fit their narrative of their 1% leader that they want to have in place. And so, who pays the maximum price in ignorant land of blindly supporting leaders, leaders who have total power, way too much power than what any leader should ever have? You know, um, who pays the maximum price are the voiceless. That's the void. The, the voiceless, the kids, the elderly, the underclass, they always pay the maximum price for adult ignorance. So, all right, I'm <laughs> a little rough this morning. It's a whole, it's a whole lot of stuff. I'm not, I'm trying to see what y'all are talking about because I'm I'm I could be off in La La Land you know so yeah. I'm gonna see if I'm wrong if I'm wrong let me know if I'm wrong but this is uh this is what I see and this is the way I see it I just see it's just one percent doing the same thing in every country now we got the internet we can share that information with them and find out that we're all being played 
And those of us who actually have the ability to see it and lack the emotion to support it and to be lost in the drama, will talk against it. Um, yes, Sister Susan, all this, and it's all done with the, the, the money from the backs of hardworking Americans. Y'all work more and more and more, your bridges can fall apart, and we ain't doing a damn thing for them because they don't care about you. And that's the thing that I can't process, that people can't see, that the 1% don't give a damn about you. And even if one of your presidents ever, ever cared about us, they're not allowed to do anything about it because y'all are so busy fighting each other, they don't have to do anything about it. They can starve America out. They're just starving America out in a different way, a different way than what they're doing in Yemen. Um, but it's still the same starvation. Uh, what y'all saying? Yeah, yeah, ish, yeah, I know that's, your, that's where you're from. I know you're Australian. And that's why I, I appreciated you jumping in and giving your perspective too, because um, I saw that I was thinking of you. Like, it's, it's obvious that when, when people buy into these models, and I say America, I'm hard on America. It's really not America, you guys. It's, it's just the 1% model, and they deploy that model everywhere. And anyone who balks that model, they destroy or they invade. Um, yes. And, well, you know, Susan, and I think the, the Palestinian children are probably treated a hell of a lot worse. Like, there, there's, I don't even think there are cameras in the prisons they put those kids in. And some of the stories that you, you know, that you hear coming back from how they're treating the Palestinian kids for throwing rocks at tanks, it's insanity. It's insanity that anybody would be in support of any of this ever, no matter how much they liked the last president or the current president. We used to we used to be a society that would sit down and talk through solutions, right? And we don't do that anymore because there's a lot of money to be made. Um, yeah, Ish, and it looks like you said um, that's happening to the young aboriginals who live in real po poverty, the communities don't get maintenance on houses and amenities. Same thing as America-ish. This is what we do. We ignore people and they, their kids turn to whatever. They turn to whatever because survival is survival. And if we don't take care of people like we're all family, then crimes occur. Crimes occur. Then, of course, you've got the ignorant people who maybe that's. I don't want to offend anybody. But you have people who don't really think it through and they buy into the fact that they won the birth lottery and they don't have to do survival things They They had a good you know, mother or father or both. And they were born with a little bit of money. They were lucky enough to go to a school and not get trapped. And because of that, they use that privilege, that birth privilege to to look at others and, and come down. on. Them. And they do that all over the world because it's a model that's handed down. You keep people in debt and you keep them poor and you invoke all their survival characteristics and then you punish them when they try to survive. Um, the elders lobby the government to give these boys outback programs on country and traditional justice practices, trying to give them back self-identity. It's a better path and seems to work. And we know that works everywhere. When you give people pride in what they are, who they are, who, or what they think they are, who they think they are, they feel pretty good about themselves. Um, and when people feel good about themselves, then they take care of themselves and more. You know, they have they have more of a vested interest in in not being destructive. And and I think you know that probably is part of repair and trying to. Um, lift people back up and give them a sense of, you know, it's like a community, you know, people, if you have pride in your community, you take care of your community, your yard looks nice and you kind of do things. You don't have grass, don't grow no grass, y'all. <laughs> you don't have grass. Grass is the most unsustainable thing on the planet. You can't, don't have grass, then <laughs> arguing for sustainability. I know you're going to get the fines if you don't cut it, but put in some ferns and just put some mint, do something. Some, you know, anything that stops the grass from growing, that's one of the things that's destroying the planet. This idea that y'all got to have these manicured grass lawns, but uh, I don't want to go. There. But, you know, the other thing ish I was thinking about that I was because I was watching I was watching uh, a podcast not too long ago and they were talking about walkabout. They were talking about walkabout and how people go walkabout in Australia 
and they eat grubs, you know, so they eat, the majority of the world's population eat bugs, so y'all put away your prejudice, whoever's thinking about it. But they eat grubs, and it's like this sustainable thing when, I guess, they go walk about, they know where the water is, they know where the food is, they know where the wood is that's just moist enough that has these grubs that they can eat and exist on. And so it's like an abundant land. And here in America, we don't really think about Australia as an abundant land. And I, I believe all lands are abundant. You know, even the Eskimos, they live in abundant lands because they know what to look for. They know where the food is. They know where the water is, which is the main screw in governments owning land. And that's why the wealth is always attached to the land, people. It's always the biggest screw that ever happened to us is we gave up our land. Wealth is always attached to land. If you think wealth comes from getting a great job in the city and putting a lot of money in a bank account, you're just waiting on the next Great Depression. And when that next Great Depression comes, you'll realize that real wealth is always in land ownership. It has nothing to do with this fake money and fake banks that are not attached to gold in any way. Because any time the banker wants your wealth, you can have millions in the bank. They'll take it. And, and they'll find schemes and all. They don't have to do a Great Depression, but they can find ways of taking it. This is why, you know, uh, a prophet once said, mo money, mo problems. And it's, it's totally true. You want, you want strength, wealth, and sustainability? That's about having land. And so... When you don't have an uh, abundance in places like Hong Kong, Australia, America, you know, when you don't have access to land, food, water, then you have scarcity. When you have scarcity, you'll have survival. When you have survival, you're always going to have crime. It's just how it goes. We were an abundant species all through history. We lived in abundance. We knew where the food was. We knew where the water was. We walked across the whole planet. And it's only in the last couple thousand years that we started listening to the kings and the lords that we became a species of scarcity. Um, and that's that's what's walked us into this time of mass scarcity and violence. And the violence is easy to stop. People who are happy aren't violent people. So why not just make people happy? That's why I say y'all need to look at the Venus Project and y'all need to listen to uh, Joseph Peters. And listen to people who've actually gone around the world and debated these things and talked about what is a societal evolution looks like. So it's pointless to evolve our brains to go back to evolving our brains and evolving uh, different aspects of humanity. But if we don't evolve our societies like a government is something it has to evolve. When we find out our currency models don't work and they make more problems than they solve. We got to keep upgrading. We got to keep moving forward. Um, Wait till I try honey ants. Oh, ish, that's not going to happen. <laughs> I had to worry about that. I'm not eating honey ants. I'm not eating no ants. And I'm pretty sure in life I have eaten ants. I've, eat, I've drank mosquitoes in my coffee and fruit flies and bug. I know. I And I embrace that and I understand that. But I am still indoctrinated in certain ways. Now, if I start seeing some zombies walk around out here and I don't want to go out in the street because they're trying to eat brains and stuff, then I eat some ants. I'm going to eat me some ants. I get the silver fish. I grab the jokers. I put them on some butter and I cook them up. But until then, I'm not eating a honey ant. And I know they're supposed to be delicious. I do. I do. I do. I've heard people who eat them. They talk about how sweet they are. And they got the little on the booty. They got the little, the little, uh, I, I'm, I'm here talking. You know what I'm talking about because you live there. And I don't think everybody knows what I'm talking about. So let me, let me see if I can find a picture. Just honey ants. So they got the little little honey pouch on the booty. And uh, like that, look, how that look delicious. Don't that look delicious? You just want to just take that honey and put in some tea and just drink it right up? Not me, I don't. Because <laughs> to me, that's an anus. And anything that comes out of somebody's anus or attaches to an anus or around an anus, okay, that's not totally true. But any, <laughs> uh, we're not going down that road today. But, but if it comes out your anus, it's not going in my mouth. You got to be some zombies. You got to do it. <laughs> oh, gosh. All right. This is where I know it's time to stop. This is where I know I've gone far enough. But, uh, yeah, uh, one day-ish, I come on over to Australia, and we can sit down and have some, some anus uh, juice 
sugars from some some honey ants but that's gonna be after <laughs> after all of this nonsense falls apart which i suspected i don't know nobody knows what's gonna happen in this world uh but anyway uh, it is friday so enjoy your friday everybody just remember and keep in mind that you're not on this planet alone you don't have to live in ignorant land. There are plenty of people with solutions. We just have to embrace them. We have to make things go viral. We have to make the right things go viral. We have to avoid pol politics, avoid political discussions, avoid political positioning and all that BS. Take a position on human rights in everything, all the time. Take a position on sustainability in everything, all the time. Try to walk your life back to more of a sustainable uh, stance. Don't support things like slavery. Call people out when they start saying just things that make no sense. Always carry the facts with you. Line up with other people who are talking the facts also. And the other thing, and last message for the end of the day for y'all go and have a great weekend, is always be willing to be wrong. Intelligence comes from being wrong. Make a stab at something, and if it ain't right, Someone calls you on it saying ain't right. Anyway, we end on the anus ants. <laughs> uh, thank you. -ish. Anyway, listen, uh, you guys have a wonderful day. It was good to see you guys. Thanks for signing in, and I'll see you around the Internet.